Americans who are unhappy with their lives and their country. With us now, Dr. Gail Sauls, a psychiatrist in private practice. And from Newburyport, Massachusetts, Dr. Keith Ablo, also a psychiatrist and a Fox News contributor. How often, in, in your experience, Dr. Ablo, does the private angst merge with the public angst? So, it, it, say you're a happy person in your private life, but you're really like Trump is, fed up with the country and you're really depressed about it. How, how does that impact? In this case, Bill, it impacts very significantly, and many people are more sour on their own existences, depressed even, because of what's happening in the nation. And the reason is because this isn't just a, a calamity. This is about a message from Washington that you ought not practice autonomy, that you are not the master of your destiny, that you need help in order to make the right decisions and you're going to have to buy things that we want you to buy like health care insurance even if it isn't the best product or the one you would choose a disempowering message from the government just like one from a family is depressing how do you see it dr salt i think people are more unhappy about their individual states but i do think it has a lot to do with what is going on in the country which is trouble in the economy when people don't have money they feel like they don't have power and they feel helpless and that is frightening I think people are frightened about a lot of the violence that's going on right now what's happening with guns right now and feeling helpless in terms of most Americans wanted yeah. there to be better background checks and yeah, they but gun violence get that does through. It. when you look at the population and, and as you know violent crime has fallen now for two decades and and gun violence doesn't really affect most people personally while the economy does as you pointed out they see it they see it on TV yeah, and I, would they see it. I would disagree with you I would say that seeing on TV mass shootings like Newtown and like the Colorado movie theater while it doesn't happen to most Americans it's so present in their living room really? so? I don't know I think, one person I, think I have to say afraid. I don't know one person in my set and my set is working class it's not mm -hmm. she she Manhattan people all right I don't know one person worried about guns not anybody yeah. all right now uh, Dr. Ablo when you see these polls, all right, you see that two-thirds, let's be fair, two-thirds of, of Americans right now, according to the polling, are disenchanted with the country. They don't think the country is, is doing what it should do. President Obama's taking a heat for that. He's the leader. Okay. Now, can that become a personality disorder? And, and hear me out here. I hear invective on radio and television is disgusting hateful uh, and I think um, harmful to the people who hear it and I hear this from both sides and it's, it's grounded in well I can call so-and-so this name because he's hurting the country doing this how do you how do you process that uh, I think that the polarization certainly can weigh on people because they have a sense of impending doom something's got to give because why does something have to give because Bill, all of this adds up to, regardless of what Dr. Salt says, it's not that people are, you know, laid low by watching news of Newtown. It's that they know that they're being called not responsible enough to own guns. Okay, but are they they're being not responsible up? enough to keep a job? Look, are they being whipped up by the hateful rhetoric? You heard Sandra Flux say, if uh, Fluke say, if you if you're against. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're supporting the religious conviction, then you're, you're you know, you're, you hate women, you're, you're attacking women. I mean, this whips people up, and they do it on the right, too. They whip them up into this angry state like this. And I don't know, Absolutely. I think that's, that's driving a lot of this. I think, it's, I think it's both and. It's whipping people up with the hateful rhetoric, and it's telling them if you have an opinion, that makes you a bad person. No, I don't you're know. not no, supposed no. to no. voice right, what are you saying? No, I, I, wait, wait, let, I, go ahead. I, I think we, we've lost a certain decorum, a certain, uh, certain empathy to stand in the shoes of the person that we're screaming at. So there is a, a lot of hateful screaming going on from both sides, and I think it also makes us feel kind of helpless and hopeless, that no one can come to any agreement. It's like Listen. if you're in a family and your parents are arguing all the time and you can't come to them and say look this isn't working out for me I need to get something done sit down with me and help me fix things and they just keep screaming arguing, at each other so dysfunctionally right, right. Yeah. you're so, going to so feel that, very helpless. What, but what does that do to a human being when, when they hear it and they see it it makes
depressed? It makes it, them, it what makes does it do? It makes feel hopeless and kind of impotent. And that, it, you know, there's a phenomenon called learned helplessness, where they electrify the bottom of the cage for rats and they just shock them no matter where they went in the cage. And eventually, you know what the rats did? They laid down. Well, they it never, yeah. anybody yeah. would. Yeah, not at all. And I, mean, I, right. I think nationally right. that people are feeling somewhat helpless. And I'll give you the last word, Ablo. Now, keep it the, pithy, the, man. Go ahead. Here, here's the pithy last word. Uh, there can be uh, no height of rhetoric too high when you have a guy in the corner office who wants to, in a wholesale way, uh, disengage us from our freedoms, uh, from what it's and meant to be American. you're talking about the president, right? Absolutely. From entrepreneurship and from empowerment. This disempowerment president is creating depression in people who are being told not to actualize their own selves.